Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BVFOhio.com and the conclusion of our study of Ephesians chapter 5 verses 9 through 11 that we titled The Fellowship of Outcasts. This is part two of two. That's to every one of us. And that will involve separation and confrontation. Ephesians 5.11 says, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. That's the separation. And then B, but rather reprove them. There you go. That verse gives you A and B. What's going to happen is you're going to have separation when you have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness and you're going to have confrontation because it's again, this isn't a uh, multiple choice. This is a direct commandment, but rather reprove them. Now you have your personality, your way of doing it. You know, you may uh, want to take somebody out for a coffee and have a nice little conversation and say, you know, we're friends and uh, I, don't, I want you to know I, I need to talk to you about something but I don't want to uh, I, want, I don't want you to think I'm trying to start any trouble and I hope there's no trouble as a result but we just need to talk about this and lay it out Amen? Amen. And when you tell them what the Bible says and why you're opposed to it you're reproving them you don't have to throw things you don't, even, you don't have to scowl. You don't have to call names. And you don't have to get up and walk out angry. If you just tell them the truth. That's all to reprove someone is just to tell them the truth. That's all there is to it. Now that's not easy. But that is all there is to it. Bible believers have to be willing to become what? Because that's what, sadly, it's going to happen sometimes. Uh, I've, I've had to confront people for things that they're doing, and they're outcasts. And uh, they just, that means cast out. I think I got it right here. Outcast. Webster's 1828 says, One who is cast out or expelled and exile, one driven from home or country. Churches. Family gatherings. Class reunions. I haven't been invited to the last couple ones. This year's our 30th, and I still haven't gotten an invitation. Wow. And that if, that, if, if that's how they feel, because I know they know where I'm at, I'm on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. And if that's how they feel, you'll answer for it. I won't. You know who you are. Amen. And I know they watch. I know they do. And the only thing I've done is say, I'm staying with the Bible. I'm not going to go along with the sodomite culture that many of my school graduates have adopted and embraced. I'm not going along with you on that. I'm not going along with drunkenness. Amen. And, I'm, and you know, when it comes to people who have a drug problem, I have all the sympathy in the world for any of those, any sin. If they will repent, there's restoration. Amen. But as long as you're going to do the drugs and get drunk and fornicate and, and be a sodomite or whatever, I'm going to stand here and say, it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. And if that causes them to rescind invitations to uh, weddings and even funerals and class reunions and whatever, so be it. Amen. I am willing to be a member of the Fellowship of Outcasts. Someone once attempted to correct me, saying that the Bible never refers to Christians as outcasts. Uh, not only is that not true, but uh, I'm going to one-up them. It's not only true that the Bible refers to us as outcasts, and not always by that name or that term. But the fact is, it's better than that, Isaiah prophesied it. In Isaiah 56-7, the outcasts are the ones gathered with Israel. Amen. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. For mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. Amen. Amen. 
See, this is prophecy. At the time this was spoken, the house, uh, the temple was only for any Jew. Right. And he's prophesying at a time where there'll be all people, meaning there'll be black, white, yellow, green. I don't know, whatever your color is. As long as you're one of his children, so to be along with Israel, the Lord God which gathereth the outcasts of Israel saith, yet will I gather others to him beside those that are gathered unto him. That's you. Amen. That's me. Amen. We're among the outcasts. Outcasts of the world. You're an outcast because you stand with Jesus Christ. You're an outcast because having been born again, you no longer have anything to do with the unfruitful works of Amen. darkness. Amen. And you reprove them. Amen. And we're going to be gathered. Could be any moment. Amen. Amen. If, you, if the world loves you, listen to this, if the world loves you, you love the world. If the world loves you, if you can just hang out with anybody and they don't have any negative to say about you and they're just, oh, we just get along so well and you know they, we don't have any issues. Someone's living in sin, you ought to have an issue with them. Amen. Doesn't mean you're, it doesn't mean you, you tell them, never, you leave, I disown you, I wash my hands of you, you're dead to me. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying you tell them the truth and they're going to do that to you. And if so, then that's going to be the opposite. But if you embrace, accommodate, make room for the world, and we're talking about the lost system of this world of sin, they'll love you if that's what you're after. You can call yourself a Christian. As a matter of fact, they love people who say, I'm a Christian, and then accommodate their sin. That's the best thing in the world for them. They love that. That's why they loved, you know, like people like Obama, who said he was a Christian, and he was the best friend for Sodom, the best friend for baby killers on the planet. Yeah. That's my kind of Christian right there. <laughs> the best buddies were Muslims. Yeah, he hung out with the Muslims, went to the mosque, took his shoes off, bowed down. Here's what John, 5, John 15, 19 says, If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. See? But, because you're not of the world, outcasts. But I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world what? Hateth you. Hateth you. You're not going, I don't care how good an actor you are, a Christian, if you stand for the Word of God, you're not going to win an Oscar. Right. Amen. It's one thing you don't have to worry about at an Oscar or uh, Academy Awards, uh, Globe, Golden Globes, whatever those awards are. One thing you never have to worry about is hearing a sermon. <laughs> They'll get up there and preach socialism, communism, anti-Americanism. You're not going to hear a sermon. And they'll even get up and say, Ah, I love you, Jesus. Thank you very much. And you find out the reward they're getting is for some pornographic thing they did. Yeah. You know, because that's their Jesus. Not the Bible Jesus. Their Jesus. But a lot of them say, Oh, I'd like to thank God. And if that's, you know how you got closed captions? They should make sure and put a small G on that. Because yes. yeah. that's their God. Yeah. Now look at this. I didn't mistake and put the same screen in. This is different. If the world loves you, you're not doing it right. Amen. 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 There's something wrong with you. Why? Well, that's what Luke 6.26 talks about when all men speak well of you. Some of you know what I'm going, where I'm going. Read that with me. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the prophets. All men speak well of you. And I get in a lot of trouble for bringing up Billy Graham. But that's what you, you got to... You, you see, Billy Graham is loved by the world. Why? Because he wouldn't take a stand against sin. He said, I'm just going to preach the gospel. And, well, he did sometimes give a clear, clear gospel message. That doesn't excuse him any more than does anybody else for his refusal to speak up and denounce abortion and denounce the sodomite thing and denounce the wickedness in Hollywood and to denounce what his buddy Bill Clinton did while he was in office and so forth. 
That's why I give thumbs up to his son Franklin, who is not loved by the world because he does denounce wickedness. Amen. It's not. It's very rare for the son to take a better stand than the father. You know that. Most of the time, you have a guy who takes whatever stand he does, and then the next generation is a step down. And in the Graham family, it went the other way. Thank God. Amen. At least to this point, Franklin's standing up. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. You ever had somebody look at you and just say, Oh. That's what that means. Woe unto you. I remember one time I got in trouble. I didn't know I'd got caught. And I'm walking home just thinking I got away with something. My brother's like, You may not want to go in there. I'm like, Oh no, are you kidding me? He almost started crying. He knew I was in trouble, man. He's like, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Dad had a thing called a leather belt that some of the kids these days have never seen. And I knew I was about to meet it. This is much more serious, much worse. You don't want all men to speak well of you. You don't want that. Not in this world, no. So, wrap it up with a couple of questions here. Will you separate? Again, the separation isn't you, you know, actually say, putting up walls. It's you saying things. I'll give you an example. I've been, I've, I've counseled a family who had a family member who came out of the, came out, you know, clo came out of the closet. And they said, well, you know, what should we do? I said, you know, that's, this is where I take the Scripture. I said, based on this Scripture, this is what I do. Now you pray about it. And here's my policy. They can come around. I don't tell them they can't come around. But they're not going to flaunt that sin. Amen. And they're not going to bring their partners. Amen. They certainly aren't going to spend the night in my house with their partner. Amen. You just put up the rules and say, hey, we love you. If you can come around and respect our dislike for what you're doing, then you're welcome. And today, that's not good enough. They demand you make bake that cake and put two men on it. See? So that's the separation comes when you just take the stand. The question is, if it comes down to it, it's going to cost you relationships. Will you take the stand? Will you separate? 2 Corinthians 6.17 says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye what? Is that multiple choice? Is he saying, think about it. You know, if, if you can just, it's up to you. No, he's telling you, separate. Be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Amen. That's in a practical sense. You know, there's a lot of Christians, they're saved, but right now, they have, do not have a son and daughter relationship with the Father. Wow. And what a way to go through life. Giving up your inheritance. Giving up your... We talked about that in a week or two ago. There's an inheritance that you're going to blow. Yeah. And then right now, you're blowing your relationship with your Father. Will you confront? Will you confront? Ephesians 6.19, we're going to stay this morning in depth here in a few weeks. It says, this Paul writing to the church at Ephesus, and he says, and for me, he's talking about praying, praying for me, that utterance, that means you say something, utterance, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly Amen. to make known the mystery of the gospel. Look at this. For which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen. I'm just, I just believe in living it. And then they can see how I live and they'll want to know Jesus. Amen. Not in the Bible. Amen. That's, you, you find books so encouraging people to do that. Right. Just live it. And they'll just think you're so wonderful. They'll say, you're just so wonderful. I got to... It's all because of Jesus, isn't it? i got to have me some Jesus. That's not how it works. Now, it does help. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying not to live it. I'm saying you've got to speak. Amen. 
Will you be an outcast for Jesus? Amen. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them? Will you? That's what you're being confronted with this morning. But it's what you're going to be confronted with every time you read this. You're a Bible believer. You ought to be reading through your Bible. Amen? Amen. And every time you come to this, I want you to face it and do some inventory. Am I willing to be an outcast and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them? We're going to close in Philippians 3. I want you to go ahead and turn there. We're going to close and read that. Philippians chapter 3, beginning of verse 7. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. Paul is laying down what it means to be in the fellowship of outcasts. And he says in verse 7, read that with me. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ, except this and that and this and that. The word except isn't there, is it? What things were gained to me, those I counted loss for who? Christ. Verse 8. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. Stop there a second. I count what? All, all things. things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge. Here's the truth. Truth of Christ Jesus my Lord. Finish that verse. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. It doesn't mean you will lose everything, but are you willing? Would you? I was walking in our house the other day, and I really love our little house, and getting bookshelves and my books up, and yes, I have to be very careful with my sin of bibliolatry. <laughs> my love of books. Amen. I saw somebody posted yesterday or day before that they are a book sniffer and they're never giving it up. <laughs> they just get a book and go, oh, I love books. Amen. <laughs> and I thought, what if this place just burned down? And I lost all these books. I'm getting teared up thinking about it. <laughs> Ooh, that would be rough. Man, that would be rough. What if a bunch of people surrounded my house with torches and said, you either marry Fred and Steve here. No offense, Steve. I just pulled that name right out of the... <laughs> you either marry these two men or we're going to burn your house down. What would you do, Greg? Oh, I'd have to say let her burn. Huh? Not if you're surrounded by people. I don't even have that many bullets, Johnny. <laughs> I'm going to die trying. That's kind of the point. What would you do? Would you die trying to protect those books? Or would you just take a stand for the Lord and let them burn it? And I just, just sit there thinking, you know what? Ooh, that'd be rough, but I'd like to believe that I would just say, burn it. There's much worse things we'd lose in there, the pictures and things like that. Of course, we've got them all on Facebook now, so that's not right. You know, <laughs> upload those pictures. Someone comes and burns your house down. That way you have them. <laughs> See, we not only teach biblical truth, but practical truth here. <laughs> <laughs> well, MeWe.com, that's where you ought to load them up because they're protected and Facebook doesn't use them all the time. What about Sebi? Oh, well, now I'd go in after Sebi. They can shoot me. Well, yeah. in my, in my, at the time, Sebi was with Jenny, so oh, okay. he was safe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
But Louis says, <laughs> for, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Let's not just be flipping about that. That's not easy to say. And if you do say it, and you're just being flippant, I pray God that you never come to the point you have to think about it. But now's the time to think about it. Now's the time to have the attitude. I could give it all up. I could give it all up. Lord, I give it all to you, and if, if you burn every bit of it, I give it to you. Jobs, houses, cars, whatever. That's when it really gets real. You, you know, Janie talked about you know, not being able to hit the bank and, and make a deposit to make rent this week. What if you just lost your job, lost everything, then what are you going to do? There are people who are real good at serving the Lord until it gets rough. Because they hadn't counted and, and suffered already the loss of all things. And then when the time came, they really did have to lose it. They lost all all their faith. They no longer trusted and obeyed. And if they're a Christian, God will get a hold of them. He'll straighten them out. I'm not, we're not talking about losing salvation here. We're talking about your inheritance. We're, ta we're talking about your relationship with the Lord. And we're talking about your own witness and testimony and influence on other people. And that's what... It, you know... A lot of times you hear preachers when they, they, they stop a sermon and they just tell you exactly what you need to be thinking. I'm not going to do that. I try not to do that very often. I want the Holy Spirit to talk to you through this. What do you need to count as a loss? What do you need an attitude adjustment on? Only you can answer that. This is you and the Holy Spirit. It's His book, amen? amen. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just up here preaching it. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for you, the fact You love us enough to tell us the truth. Amen. That You have a book. Your Holy Spirit brings it to mind. Uses it. Wakes us up to our need. I pray everybody in this room opens that Bible and allows it to speak to them in their need. Their, where they are has a real relationship with you, Lord. I pray everyone in this room is open to what your word has to say to them. Willing to repent where we need to repent. Willing to confess what we need to confess. Willing to do what we're told to do. And ready to go whether that's to go do what you called us to do here on earth or to go up the trump of God and the voice of the archangel just to be ready thank you Lord for Jesus that we can talk about these things knowing we're saved having eternal life and knowing that we have eternal life and we just give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name.
for solid King James Bible preaching and teaching, along with the encouragement of the Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, tune in to our internet radio station available every day, 24 hours a day, at bbfohioradio.com. Join listeners from over 150 nations, all 50 U.S. states, and other U.S. territories who are tuning in and receiving free Bible teaching at bbfohioradio.com.